Morning, I seem to be here a lot at the moment, but I'm at Walton on the Nays again today. And I'm gonna be going on a geo walk and I think I'll make some little clips as I go around, which I can make into hopefully a video uh, later on. So I picked up a lovely leaflet from the Essex Wildlife Trust, uh, which hopefully is gonna guide my way around uh, looking along this piece of coastline that leads beyond the Crag Walk here, the undefended cliffs. You can see the Nays Tower up there, and then these cliffs that are starting to come down. There is mass movement and there is weathering happening up there, and then erosional processes and transportational processes down there near the beach and beyond. I'm now stood on the Crag Walk. This is a viewing platform and it also acts as a coastal defence to protect the Nays Tower. It's constructed from boulders of a crystalline rock called Larvikite, L-A-R-V-I-K-I-T-E. That's from Norway and was put here in 2011. Now small chunks of this Larvikite have made their way down the beach and that evidence is longshore drift. So any Larvikite found anywhere that's not here has come from here and has been transported along the beach. Now, unlike all of the indigenous rocks, the rocks we find here at Walton on the Nays, uh, which are all sedimentary rocks made from sediments, uh, Larvikite, which is from the Crag Walk, is a crystalline rock um, formed from magma. Uh, these crystals are very large, uh, which shows that uh, they cool down very slowly deep underground. Uh, this rock comes from Larvik, which is an area near Oslo and is much older. These rocks are much older than those that are from the Nays area. Uh, and these, the, the, those uh, lava kite rocks are about 300 million years old. I'm now down on the wave cut platform and we can see here uh, pillbox that are dating from the Second World War. And we get a lovely little lovely view of the cliffs up there. So this is the full Nays outcrop. In ascending order from the bottom, London clay, red crag, then Thames, Medway, Gravels, Loess, and then uh, modern soil on the top. This sequence spans nearly 60 million years of recent Earth history and provides evidence of dramatic changes in climate and sea level during that time. Now these strata have been largely undisturbed, but there's some areas where they have gone a little bit wonky. Uh, that is where they have been disturbed and they are called involutions. So the erosion and the weathering is causing recession all along this piece of coastline that's undefended. But the shape of the cliffs changes the further north we go. So where I've just come from, we can see that the angle uh, is much more shallow. Uh, perhaps the uh, mass movement here is gonna be more slumping, a rotational slip, and the further north we go, perhaps it goes into being slides, uh, perhaps rock falls dominate the cliffs up there uh, and that's perhaps to do with slight change in the geology in terms of the thickness of the different bands. How fast are the cliffs receding? Well using an 1874 map as the baseline for this the cliff recession can be calculated. So in the north the average rate in the first 50 years of that period since 1854, 1874 was about a meter a year. This dropped uh, to about 0.58 of a meter per year over the following 50 years but then appears to have increased since then to the point where between 1973 and 1988, it was about 1.45 meters per year. This means that over that period of time, since 1874, there's been about 100 meters lost from these cliffs. Yeah, so further north, there's really quite a narrow beach now. So wave cut platform, uh, then the beach begins. And clearly these cliffs are rapidly eroding. These are dynamic cliffs. Um, and th there is rock falls going on here. This is this is all about uh, well, there's no rotational slump happening coming down in blocks, isn't it? All this stuff is falling off. And there's a little area down there. I'm not going to go too close to these cliffs, but uh, this is coming down in chunks. There's even evidence, perhaps, of uh, beginnings of kind of wave cut notch here. Come along there. Sort of happening. So up there, we might get some weathering sub-aerial weathering processes down here erosion from the sea when it's up and when it's in and this narrow beach evidence of huge really quick longshore drift the london clay here has light and dark bands the leaflet says the light bands contain clay minerals of volcanic origin there's lots of cracks up there at the top of the cliff and actually just there, there's a little hole right in the middle just there uh, could be a burrowing seabird maybe. Sand martins I think live here. Uh, that's going to be weathering, biological weathering.
If I could just return to those band, different colour bands in the rock, uh, in the London clay. So the, the Eocene, which was, let's say, 40 million years ago, uh, saw the start of the seafloor spreading that led to the formation of, North, of the North Atlantic. That was between Greenland and Europe. This was accompanied by massive volcanic activity in northwest Scotland, and this produced large ash clouds that drifted over a wide area. Today, these form distinctive marker bands over much of the North Sea Basin, uh, including here in the London clay. There's a few trees that have come down onto the beach. Look at this one. How long can that have been down? Not very long. And a lot of the branches have had all the bark stripped off. I guess by the power of the waves. The erosion has taken all the bark off. Um, so therefore we can see where the waves have been quite a lot. And where they haven't. Look at that. Just gives us a real sense of the dynamic nature of this coastline. On the wave cut platform, in amongst these uh, fossil twigs and things, there's a piece of rock that shouldn't be there. I reckon that is a piece of lava kite, which comes from Crag Walk down there in the distance, indicating longshore drift has happened. <laughs> 